Hi, I'm Bob Bowden, and this is Two Way Street. Today, there are more than 865 U.S. military bases on foreign soil, which cost $250 billion a year. New bases are being built in Romania, Bulgaria, and Colombia. On the one hand, some say that our foreign bases protect U.S. interests, allow for fast troop deployment, and keep wars off American soil. Others say that our system of military bases is a Cold War relic that's outdated and obsolete, that we can project our power by air just as well, and that our bases actually work against us by fomenting anti-U.S. sentiment. So tonight's debate resolution is the U.S. should close its military bases around the world and bring our troops home. That's next on Two Way Street. Our program is called Two-Way Street not only because every issue has at least two sides, but also because unlike most policy shows where the experts only talk to you, on this show the audience gets to talk back. That's a little later. So our question tonight, though, should the U.S. close its military bases around the world and bring our troops home? We have two guests who say yes to that statement. Charles Pena is a senior fellow of the Independent Institute, author of Winning the Unwar, a new strategy for the war on terrorism. He was also foreign policy advisor for the 2008 Ron Paul presidential campaign. And Doug Bandau is a senior fellow at the Cato Institute and author of Foreign Follies, America's New Global Empire. On the other side, answering the resolution, no, we have Larry Korb, a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress and author of A New National Security Strategy in an Age of Terrorists, Tyrants, and Weapons of Mass Destruction. Also, Frank Gaffney, founder and president of the Center for Security Policy and author of War Footing, Ten Steps America Must Take to Prevail in the War for the Free World. Please welcome all of our distinguished panelists here on the program. Thank you. You guys ready? Ready, coach. Right. <laughs> We're going to start the show by giving each panelist 60 seconds to state his case. And Chuck Pena. Thank you. Uh, the, the network of military bases that we have everywhere around the world today is a remnant of, of the Cold War when we were confronted by the Soviet Union, a military superpower that was a direct threat to the United States. But since the Soviet Union withered away, that threat has gone away, and so to the need to have all of those bases everywhere uh, around the world. Uh, and in fact, having uh, U.S. troops deployed in more than 150 countries around the world actually runs counter to our national security interest because the, uh, the terrorist threat that we're confronted with, which by the way is not an existential threat to the country, uh, is largely motivated by uh, feelings of occupation, particularly, particularly in Muslim countries. Uh, so a better uh, approach and a better policy would be to withdraw most, if not all, of those forces and close most, not all, of those bases. Our next opening statement, Larry Korb. <clears throat> if you take a look at the troops uh, deployed around the world, what you'll see is it's actually less expensive to keep them in other countries than in the United States because if you bring them home, you have to build facilities uh, to house them and t for them and their families, whereas in most countries like Germany or Japan, those countries actually pay for the cost of the facilities. It's also easier for us to project our military forces when they're in different places around the world. For example, in the first Persian Gulf War where Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait and the whole world, the international community decided they had to expel him, the United States forces and ground forces in Germany were able to get to that area much quick, more quickly than if they had to come from the United States. And then finally what it does, it deters people from taking military action that would harm our interests. The fact that we have forces in Okinawa and we have them in South Korea, I think keeps the North Koreans from doing something that they shouldn't. And it gets the Chinese to think twice before they decide if they should decide to take Taiwan again. Doug Bondo. Well, foreign policy and military deployment should vary based upon circumstance. The Cold War, we faced an existential threat. The evil empire, as Ronald Reagan caused it, called it, it's gone. You know, we dominate the globe like no other country ever has done. We have account for roughly half of all military spending on Earth. We're allied with every major military power and industrial power other than uh, China and Russia. So the world is very different. 
Our current network of uh, bases, basically it's a welfare policy for populous and prosperous allies who could defend themselves. They have the wherewithal, they have the population, they have the income, they could do it themselves. It also uh, you know, helps us basically engage in social engineering that's not in our interest, attempting to remake failed societies, create nation states where none has really existed. We face a different set of threats today, terrorism and proliferation. They're very different. They require a different military and, frankly, a smaller military. So Larry's right. We should bring troops home and we should demobilize them. We don't need the large-sized force that we have today and the expensive force. We have a new world that we're living in. We need a new foreign policy and a new military deployment. Frank Abney. We are at war, whether we like it or not. We are at war most immediately, most obviously, with uh, what authoritative Islam calls Sharia, and it is a global phenomenon. We are facing, in addition, uh, active or prospective adversaries who share those uh, others, the adherents to Sharia's view that we should be taken down. This is um, not because of what we have done not because of countries we've occupied, not because of governments we've overthrown. It is because of who we are. And as a result, it is incumbent upon us, I believe, to maintain forces deployed forward so as ideally to deter those various adversaries' aggression, and if worse comes to worst, to fight them on their territories rather than to have to fight them here, perhaps at extraordinarily great cost.